Hello and welcome to New Fast Food. Today I am so excited because I'm going to be making a video that I've been wanting to make for a very long time. Talking years and years, I've been wanting to make a video like this, uh, but of course it's the first year of me having a YouTube channel, uh, so this will be the first time that I'll be bringing you a complete breakdown of the top 50 fast food restaurants as compiled by QSR Magazine. So uh, QSR Magazine is an industry magazine. QSR, of course, stands for Quick Serve Restaurant. Um, that's the industry term for fast food. So the top 50 QSRs uh, just translates into the top 50 fast food restaurants. There's a lot of uh, top 50, top 100, top 200 uh, lists out there uh, for restaurants, fast food restaurants, chain restaurants. Um, but I look at the QSR top 50 as the definitive list for uh, fast food restaurants. So I'm um, very excited to be bringing you a complete breakdown. Uh, so let's just jump right in. We're gonna stop at the top of the list and move down. Of course, the top of the list, speaking the top three, is McDonald's, Starbucks, and Subway. And McDonald's, of course, this is no surprise, year after year, they are just so far above the competition, um, it's not even funny. You can see here um, in total sales, this is in millions, so that's actually about $37.5 billion in revenue that McDonald's brought in last year. These are all 2017 numbers. Numbers. Uh, the lists are always compiled uh, uh, based on last year's numbers because, of course, this year isn't complete yet. Um, so uh, $37.5 billion from McDonald's last year um, and $2.6, nearly $2.7 million per restaurant. Um, and you'll see, uh, you know, especially uh, compared to the top, other top three here, that uh, per restaurant, that is just amazing business. Uh, to be able to do 2.7 million dollars per restaurant and they have a lot of restaurants too so they have over 14,000 restaurants um, so, you know Starbucks you know people think that there's a lot of Starbucks a Starbucks in every corner well there's just as many actually about a hundred more McDonald's than there are Starbucks so if there's a Starbucks in every corner there's also a McDonald's on every corner as well but with maybe two restaurants in every corner check out Subway they've got nearly 26,000 restaurants check out the per a restaurant sales there for star for both star Starbucks and Subway uh, Starbucks brings in nearly 1 million dollars per restaurant Subway brings in you know under half a million dollars uh, per restaurant so you can see um, why the big difference between um, McDonald's and Starbucks and Subway is because per restaurant McDonald's kills them. Uh, they, they make so much money per restaurant compared to those two. All right, so that's the top three. Let's uh, open this up now. Let's uh, show you the top six because there's some interesting things going on there. Um, last year, Wendy's was there at in the number four spot. Uh, Wendy's dropped down two spots, down to the number six spot, which allows Burger King and Taco Bell to pass them up. Burger King is now at number four, Taco Bell number five, and Wendy's number six. So um, Burger King and Wendy's have been going back and forth in these, um, used to be four and five spots for a while. Um, so it's not surprising to see Burger King pass Wendy's, uh, but Taco Bell has been uh, growing. Uh, so Taco Bell uh, has been further down the list in past years and they've been steadily moving up. Um, this year they've uh, managed to crack the top five um, and I wouldn't be surprised if Taco Bell passes Burger King next year and threatens Subway uh, for that number three spot sometime in the next, mm, I'd say three or four years. It's not gonna happen immediately, uh, but with Subway trending down and with Taco Bell trending up, um, it's gonna be uh, sooner than later, Taco Bell is going to pass up uh, Taco Bell may pass up, I should say. Um, you know, nothing is set in stone, uh, but it's looking like uh, pretty soon, uh, within uh, within uh, the next five years, uh, I would say for sure, Taco Bell uh, will be cracking that top three um, and pushing Subway down. All right, so that's the top six. Let's expand the list further now. Let's take a look at the top ten uh, below Wendy's. You see Dunkin' Donuts, no movement going on there. Uh, Chick Fil A, also no movement. But I want to point out. Uh, Chick-fil-A, remember we talked about the McDonald's having a, a just crazy sales per restaurant, $2.7 million per restaurant McDonald's brings in every year. But take a look at Chick-fil-A. They bring in over $4 million per restaurant per year. Um, that's just insane. That's the, the, the highest per restaurant um, average in, in the top 50. So Chick-fil-A is actually in the top 10 having just over 2,000 restaurants. Look at, take a look at that compared to the rest of the restaurants in the top 10 there, um, and all those restaurants have at least 
5,000 stores, um, you know, Chick-fil-A is able to compete with them, uh, at least in total sales, uh, with only a little over 2,000 restaurants. So that is crazy. Um, great job for Chick-fil-A for selling so much chicken at each restaurant. All right, yeah, the other thing that of note in the top 10 here is as you can see, Domino's has passed Pizza Hut. This is something that uh, you know we could see coming for a while. There used to be a bigger separation between uh, Domino's and Pizza Hut, uh, Domino's further down on the list, um, but uh, it's, it basically started, a, about, I'd say about five years ago, uh, when they both changed their their uh, their menus up, um, Domino's, uh, in my opinion at least, uh, benefited from the menu change. And Pizza Hut, in court, again in my opinion, uh, but it also seems to be, seems to be reflected in the sales, um, was really hurt by um, the revamp of their menu. Um, and so since then, Domino's has been trending up. Uh, Pizza Hut has been trending a little bit down, um, and it's uh, been you and and you could see it coming. The Domino's was going to be passing Pizza Hut um, very soon. It'd be inter interesting to see if this continues going into next year and the following years, if, if this continues because they've taken such different paths to get to where they are now. Domino's has chosen to focus on technology and being the technology leader in the uh, fast food space, uh, whereas Pizza Hut has focused more on uh, sort of traditional marketing opportunities um, and they had that big one this year. Um, where they became the official pizza of the NFL. And um, despite what uh, Papa John uh, had said about the NFL hurting his company, um, I'd be surprised if uh, Pizza Hut doesn't benefit from their new partnership with the NFL. So it'll be interesting to see if that helps Pizza Hut enough to reclaim the number nine spot next year, or if Domino's just continues to build on their lead. All right, so that's the top 10. Uh, let's, let's get these out of here now, and let's uh, start looking uh, further down on the list. Let's take a look at spots 11 through 14. Um, that includes Panera Bread and Chipotle. Uh, Chipotle is very interesting because if you remember last year, they had a lot of bad press. They were people getting sick in their restaurants. It seemed like every week, uh, there'd be more new people getting sick at Chipotle uh, over bad things, norovirus, really, really nasty stuff. Uh, but it just goes to show you, there's no such thing as bad publicity because even with all that negative stuff going on last year, um, Chipotle still managed to uh, gain two spots in the top 50 rankings, moving up from number 14 up to number 12, passing KFC and Sonic. Um, Sonic being the one that fell the most. The KFC kind of stayed where they were, uh, but Sonic fell two spots to take Chipotle's old spot. And that was actually the big news that came out today was that the Arby's, or at least the uh, parent company of Arby's, which is Inspire, um, they purchased Sonic. So now they own Arby's, Sonic, Buffalo Wild Wings, and more. So Sonic has a down year. Um, I guess they hit the panic button and sold. Um, and now it'll be interesting to see what Inspire does with the Sonic drive-in brand. They did a tremendous job turning around the Arby's brand. Uh, Arby's was really having rough times when Inspire bought them. Um, they were able to turn uh, Arby's around mostly through a um, invigorated advertising campaign. So it'll be interesting to see what um, Inspire does with, with Sonic drive-in. If they also change around the Sonic ad campaigns, which you know, I, I, I want to say that those campaigns have been successful um, because just because they've been having the same sort of advertising for so many years, you would think that um, it must be successful. Otherwise, why would they keep those two guys around? And of course, now they've introduced two ladies. So it'll be interesting to see if they stick with that um, marketing campaign or if they decide to go in a different direction, similar to what they did with Arby's. So it's not going to be immediate. Uh, I don't think we're going to see Sonic shooting up the rankings uh, next year, uh, but maybe within two or three years, we'll see Sonic uh, start reclaiming uh, a higher spot on this list. All right, so now let's expand it down uh, from uh, 15. Let's go all the way down to 22. There's a, a couple of interesting things for me to point out here. So uh, you can see after we get down um, below Sonic Drive-In, it looks like all of these places have gained a spot. Well, how can that be? Uh, well, it's, it's due to the way that they made up this list this year. Last year, they had uh, Carl's Jr. and Hardee's combined into one restaurant. This year, I guess because of the direction that uh, Carl's Jr. and Hardee's have gone um, with different advertising campaigns and slightly different menus, um, uh, they've, they've decided to split up those two brands. So now, and you'll see as we get down further on the list, 
Hardee's and Carl's Jr. are separated in two different restaurants. And because they were combined last year, they were up here further on the list. And so, uh, and so by separate, and so so by separating those two and dropping them down further on the list, it took all these restaurants in the middle here and and sort of artificially moved them up. So Dairy Queen all the way down through Whataburger, these restaurants all benefited from the fact that the uh, QSR magazine decided to split up Hardee's and Carl's Jr. I want to point out here um, that uh, this is typically where I draw the line for covering fast food restaurants on my channel, down here around the top 20. Um, and I wanna point out why. Um, actually, if going by this new list, I draw the line down at 21. Right? Usually, I normally include Panda Express and then the last one that I cover. Um, and, and take a look at why. You can see uh, that after Panda Express, they, they made $3 billion last year. Uh, the immediate spot below them is a, is a big drop off, right down to $2 billion by Whataburger, there's a big drop off there. Um, and same thing with the number of restaurants. Uh, Panda Express has over 2,000 restaurants. Uh, the next ranked restaurant right below them, Whataburger, only has 821. Um, that's a big drop off. You'll see as we start going down here, the, you know, the, the drop off is, uh, in terms of number of restaurants is not as significant as we move down to some of these other ones. Um, but the, the number of restaurants combined with the number uh, uh, with the revenue numbers, there's a big drop off there once you get past Panda Express. And so that's where I draw the line. You know, people all the time are asking me, you know, how come you don't cover this restaurant? How come we don't cover Raising Cane's, uh, In-N-Out Burger? Uh, well, that's the reason why. Um, uh, there's only so much time that I have to talk about fast food restaurants in my videos. Uh, I only can make so many videos a week. Um, when I first started, I tried to talk about all of them, the whole top 50, um, but it just it became apparent very quickly um, that there was just too much to talk about. And I had to make the decision to limit myself to just the top 20-ish is about where I draw the line, okay? Um, so, uh, like I said, below them is Whataburger, and then now let's bring up uh, below that, let's go 23 through 30. Let's go, let's do that. And you can see here, this is where we have Carl's Jr. and Hardee's. Um, of course, combined, they were up higher on the list, but now when you separate them out, they drop down below to numbers 23 and 26, respectively. Um, also in this range, we see Jimmy John's and Zaxby's. Zaxby's is the, the highest restaurant on the list uh, that I haven't been to. I've never been to a Zaxby's and a couple of other places on this list, um, but um, not very many. I, I've been to almost all these places. All right, so now we'll take a look. Below Carl's Jr., you'll see there's a, the opposite trend, right? Above Hardee's, um, places that were just remain the same actually artificially look like they went up a spot. Now, as we get down below Carl's Jr., um, places that stayed the same are actually uh, artificially looking like they're dropping down a spot. That's because they used to just have um, one uh, restaurant above them, Carl's Jr. and Hardee's. Um, now, splitting those up, uh, you, you have uh, two restaurants ab above them. And so it makes them look like they got squished down uh, further on the list, but really, um, they're about the same. So I denoted that in a pink color here so that it, uh, it looks like they went down, but uh, not as bad as some of these other ones. Um, so you see Five Guys, Culver's, Bojangles all uh, stayed about the same. Uh, Wingstop um, did stay at the same ranking, but of course they actually moved up a rank because of the Hardee's uh, Carl's Jr. effect. All right, so now let's uh, drop down below them. Let's go um, 31, uh, let's do the top 40, 31 through 40. All right, so that brings in places like uh, Jersey Mike's, um, Steak and Shake, Checkers Rallies. Those are two restaurants, but they did keep those ones combined. Um, Apoyo Loco uh, moved up two spots. Uh, Papa Murphy's dropped four. That's a huge drop off for Papa Murphy's. They are the top uh, take and bake pizza restaurant, so I guess they have that as their claim to fame. Uh, below that, you have Qdoba, Church's Chicken, Del Taco, my favorite restaurant, Tim Hortons, and Moe's Southwest Grill. So there you go, it's no favoritism. Uh, Del Taco is my favorite restaurant, but because they're so they're just so far down on the list, number 38, um, that I, I just don't get a chance to talk about them on this channel. All right, so now let's uh, go down below and let's just round out the top 50. We see um, 41 through 50 includes Firehouse Subs, McAllister's Deli, In-N-Out Burger. You know, a lot of people uh, wonder, you know, why don't you cover In-N-Out Burger? Well, look, they're down uh, number 43 on the list. Um, and that, that's mostly because uh, of the number of restaurants they have. They only have 300 
and 28 restaurants. I want to talk about places that a lot of people um, are familiar with and only having 328 restaurants. Um, you know, there's a lot of people across the country that just um, can't relate to the experience of going to an In-N-Out Burger. As amazing as, uh, as uh, tragic as that is, uh, because of how amazing In-N-Out Burger is, um, you know, a lot of people uh, have yet to experience it. So, um, Jason's Deli, Baskin Robbins uh, are next up on the list. You can see Baskin Robbins. Check out, they've got so many restaurants, but they only make $360,000 per restaurant, um, they're just scooping ice cream. So, you know, that's not a huge surprise. Um, Boston Market, another one that took a huge hit. Uh, uh, they fell four spots down to number 46. And I kind of skipped over McAllister's Deli. They, they made a lot of progress. Um, you see here, they moved up four spots. Um, so uh, bravo to McAllister's Deli. Um, and then uh, below Boston Market, you got Auntie Anne's Pretzels, Marco's Pizza. They're the only new restaurant in the top 50. Um, actually, uh, Captain D's and Jamba Juice both fell out of the top 50, uh, but of course, because Hardee's and Carl's Jr. are now taking up two spots, that only allowed one spot um, to open up, and Marco's Pizza uh, reached up all the way to number 48 to grab that, uh, that new spot in the top 50. Um, now, below Marco's Pizza is White Castle, and take a look there, White Castle dropped 11 spots. Last year, they were at number 38. This year, number 49. Uh, that is the, obviously the biggest change um, out of any restaurant, either gaining or falling. White Castle dropping 11 spots. That is a huge drop for them. Uh, and uh, you know, I tried to look into it a, a little bit to figure out why they had such a bad year. I couldn't really uh, come up with anything. So uh, White Castle is just trending down in a bad way. Um, all the way down to number 49, obviously if they have another year like that, they're going to fall out of the top 50. Hopefully that doesn't happen. White Castle is, has become sort of an iconic restaurant chain, so hopefully they can right the ship and bounce back this coming year. You know, This year they did introduce those, uh, those vegan burgers, which I'm super excited about. I, I really love the idea of these new uh, veggie patties that taste very much like, like uh, actual meat. Um, and I'm so excited, Del Taco, is, uh, they just announced today, Del Taco is testing the same type of stuff, vegan taco meat, in their, uh, in their tacos that's meant to taste exactly like uh, beef. So, um, so I'm really excited to try those. Hopefully Del Taco um, brings those nationwide, or at least starts testing them in my area. Um, and then rounding out the top 50, Noodles & Company, um, down three spots this year um, to take the number 50 spot. Noodles & Company has been trending down for a while, but I think they're actually having a pretty um, good year for themselves. They introduced um, zucchini noodles, and word is uh, those have been very popular for them. So hopefully uh, we'll see them uh, go back up uh, the top 50 rankings next year. Um, they're a, a pretty unique restaurant uh, compared to the rest of the top 50. So there you go. That's my complete breakdown of the top 50 fast food restaurants uh, for 2018. Thank you very much for going over it with me. Leave your thoughts down below on what you think about any of the restaurants in the top 50. Be sure to subscribe to this channel for more amazing fast food content or at the very least like this video as it really does help out this channel and as always you can watch more videos right now.